was born and died so we might live. Amen. The text will be the basis of our Christmas messages from Matthew 2, verses 13 to 15. Dear friends in Christ, baby Jesus has been born. Hallelujah. Now his life begins. And we've got to get him home. But that's not as easy as it sounds. Come along then, but watch out behind you. There are those who want to kill Jesus from the beginning of his life. Coming home. Now what do you recall about taking your child home from the hospital? Do you remember the weather? Warm, cold, sunny, rainy? Maybe you had a struggle getting them into their infancy. Was your child sleeping or fussy? And at least one of you in the organ loft brought your child home by airplane. We've all had different experiences. Tony and I discussed this the other night at dinner. We believe, if our brains are still working properly, that we only stayed overnight with each of the children. Bringing Carson home in December brought sunshine, but cold temperatures. What we recall about bringing Holton home was, of course, a brother there to greet him in the hospital and also at home. But both of the trips were quick. In Overland Park, Kansas, we lived just 35 blocks from the hospital, and here in Blono, we were just 15 minutes away. And then once we got them home, we didn't just hunker down. We had them in church the next Sunday, and they went where we went. Yes, life changed, but nothing compared to Joseph and Mary getting Jesus back to Nazareth. Now the wise men had made their visit, and it's time to set up home. But not so fast, my friend. Herod. Oh no. Herod. He didn't want to see Jesus live past the first few weeks of his life. And the only way to prevent this in his sick mind is to kill all the male babies in the region around Bethlehem who were two years and younger. He didn't know where Jesus was, so he planned this mass murder to eliminate him. It was a hellish time. Now the Lord again uses a dream to communicate with Joseph Rice. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and he took his child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. Tony and I don't remember the exact details of coming home and maybe you don't either. But I bet Joseph never forgot. He was asked to travel 175 miles southwest of where they were. For us, that would put us somewhere between St. Louis and Rolla, Missouri. How long would it take to walk that? But Joseph obediently followed the instructions and he saved his newborn baby. Do you see it? Do you have a proper understanding of life, the life of our Lord? From the lowly manger to the tomb cut in the rock, our Savior was the object of bitter hatred and evil men. The Savior comes to confront sin and death, and this unbelieving world and the power of the devil, he faces it all. Now we live in a time where it looks like the forces of evil are marching to victory. We see our religious freedoms being eroded. 
people living for themselves instead of for all of mankind. And it looks like from our perspective they're having their way. And we know that scripture warns that their power will only increase as we approach the second coming of our Lord. God knows all this. We call it foreknowledge. He knew everything before creation. There isn't anything, not one thing in your life that God doesn't know. As it was with Joseph and Mary and Jesus in their escape, so it is with your life and my life. God provides all things in order to achieve his holy will and purpose in us. Now the holy family remained in Egypt until the death of Herod. How long they were there is not known. But God knew all this. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet out of Egypt. I called my son. You see, the Lord had called Israel my son when he called them out of Egypt at the time of the Exodus. Jesus here is named as God's one and only son who was the representative and substitute for all Israel. And God would also call out this son of Egypt to redeem all his people. The promises of God cannot be stopped. They don't stop when you struggle with pain and suffering. They don't stop when you participate in your own brand of evil. They don't stop even when you think God doesn't care about your life or the life of the world. Remember what he left with us? I'm with you always to the end of the age. His love for mankind has no limits. His mercy and grace overcome our shortcomings. His foreknowledge trumps our worry. He's in control. Always has been. Are you coming home? Are you on the path that leads to Him? Now we're traveling a route with many dangers and roadblocks, but you all know we don't travel alone. An angel helped a family way back when, and they assist us today. Now we don't know how far we have to travel until we get to our eternal home. But we know it's there. We know it will be our dwelling place forever. We know it will take us away from the killing of babies and the other evils that surround us. Think about what Jesus has done for you. Nothing can stop Him coming. Home. Amen.